My name is Dave Glover and welcome to part two of log parsing with NetWitness. Today we're going to go a little bit further into TagVal. I'm going to show you some options based upon what we did in part one and I'm going to introduce you to a new function called varType and where that is useful. So let's jump on in. In part one we built this parser for this training log message that I had. And that was the ones that I synthesized and we can see those down below. Now, when I created that, that required five different message IDs because of the different actions. That can take a little bit of time. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you a different way that we could do it that actually shortcuts all of that. And I can do this entire message in one definition. Let's go ahead and clear this parser that I have here and start over from scratch. So let me go ahead and do that. What we wanna do is go file new and we're presented with the create new parser menu again. In this case, we're going to do training two. Again, we'll call that an application server and we'll go ahead here and click create. That will then bring up this blank screen again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in and drop our log file. Once we've got that in, we wanna go back to the parser details and we wanna click on tag val. Again, this is a special case where it is a full list of key value pairs. And there's a bunch of devices that send in this way. And also, if you're familiar with the leaf format, that also uses key value pairs. So let's go ahead and define this. Our entry separator is space. Our value delimiter is in equals. And we have no value encapsulation. In other words, none of the values are wrapped in quotes. So we've got that now defined. Let's click back on headers. And what we want to do here is we want to just click create header. Now, previously I had highlighted the put and used that as a message ID, but in this case, I'm actually going to make up my own message ID. So let's go ahead here and click on create header. First thing I want to do is click on this word or this radio box concatenation. This is where I actually go ahead and create my own message ID. In this case, I'm going to use, just to keep things simple, we'll do training. Now the message ID for everything that matches this will be training. Where do I go from here? I wanna click here and I wanna set as payload. So I wanna get that out of the way and at least cleans up the, the header section. Now I still need to define anything and everything that may change. So I'm going to go define my date times and my host name. And lastly, we'll do the host name here. At this point, my header is now complete. We click here, we'll see that all seven messages the header has defined. Now let's go ahead here and click create message. So again, what I've done is I've created my own message ID and I've dumped the entire payload into the message function. So now let's just go ahead and go create the parser for this. So for action, we'll put that into action. Once we get done with that, you'll notice that the name value pairs becomes available to check. I'll go check on that. And then also click on allow missing fields as we discussed prior. Once I do that, I'll go ahead here and click on the parse now button. And we see that this entire log file, all seven of these messages were able to get parsed with a single definition. It does not matter the order that these key value pairs came in. It does not matter if there's less or if there's more key value pairs that get sent in. We see here that host and destination zones are in the same spot, but yet they're getting parsed. That is a very quick way to add in and parse a list of key value pair log messages with a single definition. There may be some messages that come in in this format, some that come in in a uh, non-key value format. And in that case, we just have additional headers and additional log messages. One of the drawbacks to doing this is I cannot specify an event category per data type or action type. For example, for the logon, typically what I would have used is an event category name of user successful logins and for the log off, user successful log off. I can't use those. There are other ways I can do with value mappings and we can cover those in an additional session as well. But this works just fine. I use this all the time uh, to provide a nice easy way to parse multiple log messages that are in a key value pair format using uh, this method here. Now that we have this parser built, let's talk about an additional function that we could use in the parsers. 
and this would be driven off of a, of a specific use case. For example, the use case that I have is the host name is an FQDN. However, all I'm really concerned about is the short name. In this case, Bob 04, 05, 06, 07, and so forth. How would I go ahead and break that up into different pieces? Typically in the past, I would have used a Lua parser. So I would have had to parse this into a temporary variable. I would have had to write a Lua parser to do the breakups and then parse everything into the appropriate variables. However, I can now do this within the core parser and it actually is a lot easier than writing a Lua parser. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll end up using a var type and a var type along with a regex expression and capture groups to break that up. What does that look like? Okay, so first thing what I wanna do is I want to parse this to something other than hostname. So I wanna parse this to a placeholder variable. It really doesn't matter what I pick here because it's all contained within the parser. So I can just pick and use hostname temp, for example. Again, really doesn't matter. What I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and save that parser. At this point, we are done in the log parser tool. We need to now finish this up within Notepad++ or some other text editor that you have. So let's go ahead and pull up the, the parser and I'll explain to you what we're going to do. I've now opened the parser in Notepad++. We can see here how everything is defined. We see our headers, we see our messages and so forth. What we're going to do is we're going to hit enter here a couple of times. We're gonna to need to add in the code block for var type. Before we do that, let's actually open up regex 101 and define what our regex template is going to look like. Just standard regex 101, PCRE is the format. Let's put in our test string. So we'll just do bob12.acme.corp. I use regex 101 just to make sure that my regex expressions are correct and they work as I expect them to. Now what we wanna do is we actually want to put in our regex expression to make sure it behaves the way we expect it to. The regex that I will be using will be an open parentheses, bracket, caret, period, close bracket, plus, close parentheses, period, star, close parentheses. And we can see that the full match grabs everything. Group one match grabs just the host name. We will then go ahead and use this in our var type definition. The var type definition will look like the following. We have the name, which will be the variable that we wanna use. So in our case, we had defined hostname underscore temp, and that's shown here. So that's the name that we wanna use because that's the variable that we're going to pull off of. Next, we have the regex expression that we're going to use. So this is the one that we just used in regex 101 that actually broke everything up into capture group zero and capture group one. Now we need to define where the capture groups go. So we go here to the next line and we want capture group of zero to go to full host name. Again, this could go to any different variable that you choose or one that you create. For this example, we're just gonna use full host name. The next capture group which again was the short name, we are going to go ahead and put that into the host name field. So that'll then go to alias host. Once we get that put in there for the capture group zero and one, we now need to close this expression, which is nothing more than a var type expression close. At this point, when you go ahead and parse these logs out, we will take the value from host name temp that we defined down here. We will then go ahead and run it through this regex expression filter. We will take the full host name, put it to full host name. We will then take the short host name and put it to the host name, meta, or the host name variable, which again then gets translated to alias host. You could then go ahead and use this for many other types of definitions as well. One that comes to mind, would be usernames, right? A lot of times usernames will be a user at company name or company name backslash user. You could then go ahead and use this var type functionality to break up the usernames so that you have just the name itself and stripping off the domain, uh, whether it comes after or before. There's many, many different things that you can do with this var type functionality within the parser. It's much easier than using Lua parsers the way that we did before. Once we go ahead and save this, 
upload this into the log decoder, it will then parse the logs and take everything from the host name and break it up into these different pieces, as well as all of the rest of the meta keys that will get parsed out of this log message as well. So in recap, we were able to take a log message that had multiple different types and variables were out of order. We were able to go ahead and parse those all with a single message. We then pulled open a specific use case where we wanted to break up the host name and put it into different pieces and parse those different pieces into different keys. We're able to do that as well. Next, what we'll do in part three is we'll cover using a little bit more of regex within the parsers to make it easier for certain types of log files. Hope that was helpful. See you in part three.